Well, not much truer than that. So today we're going to talk about proper gun care and maintenance, um, specifically pertaining to um, you know corrosion resistance, uh, long-term storage, even short-term storage. Uh, what you want to do with certain types of firearms to kind of preserve them over time. Um, as you can see, I have a, a few firearms laid out here. Um, I have some more off to the side that I'm also going to bring in to show uh, lots of different examples to kind of match what you may have. Um, so really I guess the first thing we want to discuss is uh, some different firearm finishes and kind of their corrosion resistance, generally speaking. Now, right off the bat, let me just say uh, I'm by no means a actual expert on this topic. Uh, you know, like many of us, I'm, I'm very involved in the firearms community, so um, you know, I, I def definitely try and learn the most I can, and really this is just me sharing what I have learned with you guys. So hopefully it helps. But uh, anyway, for starters, uh, firearm finishes. So this right here is the Russian SVT-40. Um, currently, I have some uh, some of the, like the bolt taken apart, uh, top cover taken off, and all that. Um, really, just want to show you um, between the different finishes, which tend to be the best for long term, uh, which tend to be well, maybe not the worst, but basically, exposed metal itself is pretty much as bad as it gets. Uh, now, speaking about that, this here stainless revolver. Um, this isn't technically exposed metal um, because it's stainless. Um, it's a little bit different. Stainless is pretty resilient for um, you know not corroding. However, uh, from what I've been hearing from a lot of people, now luckily I haven't had this problem myself because you know, I keep it nice and clean and, and well lubricated and whatnot. But what I hear from a lot of people, uh, a lot of gunsmiths, is a lot of people assume because it's stainless that it's that much more uh, corrosion resistant and therefore they don't need to put any type of oil or preserving fluid on it whatsoever. Um, that's not true. You might be able to get away with it. You might say, hey, I have this old lever gun, you know, uh, had it for years, never put oil on it. Good for you, but it's not what I recommend. <laughs> so, stainless, although. Uh, you know, obviously it looks great. Um, it is pretty resilient. It's, in my opinion, it's a little bit tougher than uh, regular bluing, as far as corrosion resistance goes. So this SVT40 here, this is blued. Uh, this is what's called a caustic blued. Uh, it's what the Russians did back during the war times. Uh, it's basically a hot blue process. Um, it's pretty strong overall, and really the purpose of bluing, if you're if you're not aware, is you're creating an oxidized layer so that it can't further oxidize. I know it sounds kind of weird, um, but basically, you know, exposed metal itself, um, as soon as that it gets exposed to oxygen, uh, it's going to rust. And bluing is technically a form of rust. If you have a surface layer that's already oxidized, there's less of a chance of it rusting as quickly, really. So bluing itself doesn't stop the rust, however, it does minimalize the rust. Um, now, bluing itself, you some people choose to put a lot of oil on their guns, some people put no oil on their guns. Um, personally, it doesn't matter what the finish is on my gun, I'm gonna have a light coat of oil on it. Um, and usually I kinda rotate through different firearms. If I know I haven't been shooting it for a while, uh, I'm gonna kinda rotate through and you know, make sure that it's not rusting away in my safe. So, for starters here, I know I'm kind of rambling on. So this is a blued gun. Uh, what I usually do, if I know I'm not going to be shooting this for a while, is very simple. And this, sorry for the hard cut there, guys. Uh, phone just stopped recording. So, if I know I'm not going to be shooting any particular gun for a decent amount of time, uh, what I will usually do is, um, by the time I'm done cleaning, uh, I'm going to take a toothbrush, uh, and I'm going to take a bit of oil. Right now I'm using G96. Honestly, use whichever oil you prefer. Uh, that's a whole other discussion for another day. I'll just pan this over here just to show you. Uh, I have a few different kinds of oils, so it really doesn't matter uh, as long as it's one that you know you trust and 
has decent ratings at least is my recommendation. Uh, I just like this stuff because it's it stays on the gun and frankly it smells pretty nice. So <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna put a little few drops on, right? And uh, I'm just gonna go over the blued metal parts of the firearm. Um, now you put it on heavy, and then you take off the excess, right? There's two parts to that. Some people just, you know, use a paintbrush and lather the thing in oil. I mean, sure, if you want. I'm not going to recommend doing that, and especially for something like a milsurp rifle, um, anything with wood furniture. Here's the problem. Wood itself, uh, it absorbs fluids, whether it be oil, water, uh, solvents, whatever. Um, varnish, you know. So, if I go ahead here and I brush on a bunch of oil, which I'm currently doing, and then I were to not wipe off the excess and leave just a very thin layer of oil, uh, what's going to happen over time is as this sits upright in my safe, the oil is going to run down, and you might think, well, you know, it seems like it's on there pretty good. I don't think it's going to run. It will, trust me. Uh, differences in temperature and humidity, um, the oil does start to run down very slowly. It's like molasses. Um, and it gets absorbed by your wood stocks. And if you've ever seen what happens to a wood stock, um, with water, you know, they usually swell and can form and it's not very good. Um, that's what can end up happening a little bit, but primarily you end up drying out the stock. Uh, you can see a little bit of that has been done here. Uh, some of it might have been me, some of it might have been the previous owner, who knows. Uh, I do my best. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, you know, you don't, you don't want to leave oil on the wood stock, that's another thing. You know, when you're done cleaning your guns, take paper towel or whatever. I use these shop rags. Um, if you use regular, the regular white paper towel, it has too many little fibers. Uh, these are a lot better. You can get them at you know, any hardware store really sells them for pretty cheap. But uh, the, these are the best in my opinion because they don't leave as much as that, of that fine material around. So anyway, I just like to wipe off any oil I may have gotten on the, the wood stock. And you can see, I might be able to see it on there. It's picked up a little bit, right? So that would have been on that wood stock, soaking in over time, possibly ruining the finish, ruining the wood, right? So, um, ballast stall, that's a different story altogether. Um, you can do your own research on the ballast stall stuff. Uh, that's, it's a pretty broad topic and there's lots of opinions on that. So, uh, generally speaking, I don't, I don't leave oil on my stocks. Kind of oil. So, um, let's just see here. I want to check the frame. Right. So you can see I have a, a few gun parts here. Uh, these are just the um, components from, like I said, the inside of the SPT-40. Um, wh when I'm cleaning the firearm, um, I'm going to properly lubricate all of these pieces, right? Um, so let's let's say I've already done that. Um, just for the sake of, you know, this is the exterior of the firearm. Uh, I'm assuming that you already are lubricating the inside. You know what? Let me know too. Maybe I'll do a proper firearm cleaning video in the future. Um, and a uh, you know, proper lubrication video depending on which firearms you're looking at. So let me know if you guys would be interested in that. I could definitely do that. Uh, anyway, so, uh, you know, I'm going to basically just rub in this oil to the metal parts. Pretty much get it everywhere. Don't forget to move your sight posts. If you have a, you know, a rifle with a roller coaster sight similar to this. Um, <coughs> grease and grime gets stuck under that, so, you know, move it down, oil it, move it back to get the idea. So, I'm just, I'm getting lots of oil on this firearm here. Um, but like I said, we're going to wipe it off, not all of it, but we're going to wipe off uh, the excess that is remaining. So, I'm not going to do the whole thing right now, because uh, this is time sensitive, but uh, you, but, uh, you guys get the idea. Uh, basically, anywhere that you see metal, uh, you're going to put a light coating of oil. And uh, when you're done, you're going to then wipe it off the wood stock, like I was showing you. Uh, you can use this to wipe off the metal, the excess oil. However, um, I, I find these tend to absorb a little bit too much oil. Um, I like to use a microfiber. And here's the thing, microfibers, uh, if you go hard with it, it's going to strip off that oil. Uh, most of it, at least. 
if you're light with it, if you do a nice light brush with it, uh, I find these tend to spread out the oil a little bit thinner, uh, better than these do. So that's just my uh, my recommendation is get yourself one of these. They're pretty cheap. Um, and so, example, I'm going to now, and you can see how it still has a little bit of that shininess to it, right? It's still got a layer of oil on there. And I'm just going to lightly wipe off some of that excess. And that's pretty much good there, right? Just all around, all the parts that you would have got. That's it. Now, um, that all, all in is uh, what you want to do with any blued firearm. Um, so let me just pull another gun into the frame here. Okay, so I have my AR here. As you can see, it is clear. Uh, you're going to have to take my word for it. All these firearms are clear. I clear them before the... Uh, filming. Uh, I also don't keep them loaded because Canada. Uh, anyway, <laughs> with this firearm, uh, you can see the finish is a little bit different. We have a few different finishes here, actually. Um, this finish right here on the barrel um, is, I have to double check to see, it's its similar to bluing. It's not exactly a bluing finish. Uh, I forget what they call it. I think it's like Armor Knights or something like that. Uh, it's something that Smith & Wesson does specifically with these. Now, the finish on the, uh, the upper and the lower here um, is, is a little bit different than that even. Uh, this is more of a parkerization. So, parkerization is, uh, to tell the difference, generally speaking, uh, parkerization is generally a, uh, a matte finish. It's not as much of a high polish as you know your bluing is going to be. Um, it's same kind of idea, really. You're you're putting a layer on exposed metal to protect that metal from corroding. Um, with my AR, and this is kind of where it changes based on the firearm. Uh, you can see, maybe we'll see. It's a little bit glossy on here because I same idea, right? A little bit of oil. I even hit the flash hider, right? And then wipe off the excess. And that way, I know that you know. Let's say I have my greasy fingerprints someone's fingerprints on here uh, not sure if you guys know but human oil this sounds funny but the oil on your hands uh, that comes out of your sweat and you know your glands basically uh, is very very salty uh, what does salt do well salt if anyone lives by the ocean you're gonna know this uh, go outside and what are your garden tools full of rust uh, it's in the air you know it's everywhere so salty human oil uh, if you're here grabbing the gun without gloves and you know I got my my talker off here right Let's say I don't have gloves on and I'm grabbing it I'm handling the firearm maybe I'm just taking it out to show somebody or taking it out to the range whatever uh, without you know decent amount of oil on here and I leave a fingerprint well what's gonna happen is over time uh, that fingerprint where I've been touching where I've been handling the oil from my hand believe it or not is going to start to corrode the, the firearm itself. Um, and if you don't believe me, you can look this up. Uh, a lot of people aren't aware of this, so I always like to tell everybody uh, the importance of wiping down your guns. <laughs> some people say, oh, well, it makes you look like some sort of criminal. What are you, what are you wiping your, down, your gun down for? Uh, honestly, it's just to protect the, the finish on the firearm. So if you ever see someone doing that, that's, that's why they're doing it, right? Um, so, yeah, with this gun, um, like I said, I'm not gonna get into the internal uh, lubrication in this video. But uh, outside, I'm going to do the same kind of idea. I'm going to just brush the oil in, wipe it off. It's quite simple. Uh, if we move over to the Glock 17 here, nothing is clear, of course. Um, the finish they use on here, uh, I have to look up the technical name again, but uh, basically, it's this is a Gen 5, so it's, it's actually a little bit different with the Gen 5s, the, the finish, uh, than the Gen 3s and 4s. Um, some people argue that the previous finishes were tougher. Uh, if you look at a Gen 4 Glock or Gen 3 Glock, the finish isn't as um, you know, reflective. Uh, this is this looks it looks similar to the Smith & Wesson, uh, Smith & Wesson uh, AR there actually. Um, but basically so far uh, I found it's a pretty reliable finish. Uh, I have no complaints. And 
once again, but you're going to guess what I'm going to say. When I'm done, brush in a little oil of your choice, right? And then wipe off the excess. I actually keep one of these on top of my safe uh, so that if I do take out the firearms to handle for whichever reason, when I go to put them back in, I wipe off my fingerprints, the oil from my hands, right? And I'm going to, because I'm using this lightly, it's also saturated with a little bit of oil. I'm also rubbing back in the little oil, spreading it back out evenly, right? Um, revolver. All right, so this is my Smith & Wesson 629. Um, this gun, being stainless, uh, I touched on it a little bit earlier, but uh, being a stainless firearm, it is more resilient. Uh, it's a little bit tougher to, uh, as far as corrosion goes. Um, however, like I said, I still keep a light coating of oil on here. Now, depending on the finish on your um, your firearm, uh, especially if you're talking revolvers, you get nickel, you get stainless, you get blued, you get, I mean, you name it, it's, it's on a revolver. <laughs> um, I still keep light oil on here, and I'm going to actually wipe off a little bit more oil than I would with, say, any of my other handguns or any other firearms on the stainless, just because... You know, I, I like that mirror finish. I, I polished this a little bit. Um, and when you have oil on there, it's, well, go put oil on your mirror and look at it and see how clear it is, right? So it's a fine line, really. Um, I like to keep a light coat, but I wipe off more than I do with the other guns. Uh, I know I kind of went on a little bit of a, a tangent here, but uh, I just wanted to be thorough and kind of just explain to you guys what my procedure is with this. When you break it down, it's very simple. Uh, however, it's something that should be taken seriously if you want. You know, I, I want these guns to last. I, I want it to last longer than me. Um, you know, I plan on probably someday, when and if I have kids, handing these firearms down to them. Uh, assuming it's not all banned, but <laughs> that's another video. So, um, you know, I, I want to make sure that these are lasting and not just turning to dust in my safe. Um, you know, like I showed at the beginning of the video, right? I hate rust because uh, I've, you know, I've learned from experience, right? When I first got into firearms, my first my first gun was my SKS. Luckily, luckily, uh, I didn't let that rust away. <laughs> uh, I keep that very well oiled, and if you see my pictures, you'll, you'll probably see it. Um, but there's been firearms that I've I've reblued, um, you know, ones from family friends and whatnot, uh, cheap ones that I bought. I've reblued because the previous owner did not take care of them. And it's very simple, maintenance-wise. Uh, some people like to make a schedule. So let's say every three months, right? If I haven't shot this gun for three months, I'm usually going to take it out and basically just do this process. Put a little bit of oil on it. Uh, I know this video kind of dragged out a bit, but um, you know, I just want to show you guys that this is a very simple process. Um, you know, it can be done pretty quick. Put a bit of oil, go over the gun, that's pretty much it. Uh, one last thing, these here, silicone treated uh, cloths, they are excellent. I also keep these on top of my safe. Um, so like I was talking about with the, the blued finishes, or any guns really, um, to not leave your oily hands, uh, your oily fingerprints on the fire and finish, use one of these. And what it's doing is it's removing that oil as, as in your finger oil, and it's leaving a layer of silicone. Now, this is not to be used as your gun oil. Um, it's, it's something to assist with keeping it oiled, because it is a different composition than your regular gun oil. I know it says hops number nine, you might think, oh, what is it, just treated with that? Not necessarily, it's a little bit different. Um, think of it almost like Teflon, uh, stuff that's treated with Teflon, or like CLPs that have Teflon in it. Um, it's similar to that. It's, le it's leaving a very, you'll feel it if you get one of these. Uh, it's a very different coating. But what you want to do is just wipe down the gun with this. Uh, I usually do that with gloves. I keep a pair of just, you know, mechanics gloves or these, whatever, any type of gloves that I usually don't go with uh, cloth type of gloves just because they tend to absorb liquids. So if I'm holding a gun with a, you know, fabric based glove, well, what I'm doing is, anywhere there's fabric, it's absorbing, just like if you spill something on your t-shirt, right? It's absorbing that oil off of the gun, so that's that's no good. So I usually keep uh, keep some gloves on top of your safe, 
and uh, best best bet is really just put on some gloves if you're going to take it out and handle it and you know do whatever you want. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, once again, I'm <laughs> sorry the video dragged on, but this is all very important stuff to learn. So uh, if you stuck through, then uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.